Hi everyone, I've had a few videos in various stages of completion for a while now. One of my subscribers asked about this topic, shout out to Jose, and it just so happens that's one of the videos I had in the works. So today we're going to be taking a look at connecting the CD32 to the internet via Wi-Fi by adding an inexpensive ESP8266 module to the Terrible Fire TF330 expansion card. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to Spellbound. I'm your host, 32Bits. Okay, so let's connect our CD32 to the internet. This is possible because when designing the TF330, Stephen Terrible Fire Leary had the foresight to include a header for connecting an ESP8266 Wi Fi module to be populated in a later date. After releasing the 330, he did a lot of work troubleshooting and getting everything to work with the ESP8266 on the CD32. I recommend that you go over to the Exos forums and check out that long thread. Now, since then, he's written a script to set up the connection on the Amiga end and loads of other helpful information posted on the Exos forum. There's a link in the description below. Following the info posted on the forum and writing down the steps I took as I went along, I've now successfully connected three TF330s and my TF360 to the Wi Fi using an inexpensive ESP8266 module. So I thought I'd do a video going over the process that I used. Okay, so how does it work? Well, a very basic description is that the ESP8266 is connected to the header on the TF card. That header provides a serial connection to the module from the CD32. The module is flashed with a firmware that runs it that turns it into a router. That router is connected at one end to the serial connection on the CD32 and at the other end to the internet via Wi-Fi. And we set up the TCP stack on the Amiga to communicate through the module on the serial connection using serial line internet protocol or SLIP. And it routes the connection to the internet through the module. I know that's a simplified version of what's going on, but it gives you a basic idea. I don't intend for the video to be an explanation of the networking protocols involved, but rather an easy to follow guide that can help get your TF330 on the net with one of these modules. Okay, so we'll need to do four things to get this all up and running. Number one, we'll need to flash the slip router firmware onto the ESP module. Number two, we need to configure the module to connect to our home Wi-Fi network. Number three, we need to physically install the module into the TF card header. Number four, we need to configure the driver and the TCP stack on the Amiga to communicate through the module to the internet. I know that there are a few ways to accomplish these steps. Some people will use Windows or Linux. I'll be using Linux to do the flashing. Also, some people will do the module configuration on the Amiga. But I'll be connecting the module to the home Wi-Fi from Linux before I install it in the TF board. Either way works, but this is the way I know worked for me, so that's how I'll be doing it in the video. Flash and set up the module to connect to Wi-Fi on Linux. Then install the configured module on the TF330 board then set up the Amiga to use it for its internet connection. Okay, now you have an overview of how it works and the process that we're going to use to get us up and running. So let's get into the details. You're going to need an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module like this one. Um, you're also going to need a way to flash or program that module. I picked up this one along with a USB adapter slash programmer for $8 from Amazon. And I'll put a link in the description below. Now that we have the module and a way to connect it to our Linux computer for programming, we're going to need to get some software to do the programming and communication. To flash a firmware, you'll need to install a Python tool called ESP Tool. To install the tool on our Linux machine, we're going to open up a terminal and enter in this command. Python space dash m space pip base install space ESP Tool. If you get an error, you may be missing a dependency. The error will tell you what's missing. I had to install two dependencies on Linux Mint 19.3 by entering these commands in the terminal. sudo app install python setup tools and sudo app install python wheel. When the tool's finished installing, don't close the terminal because we're gonna need to enter a few more commands. Okay, now we need to download the firmware package that we need to flash onto the uh, module. First, we're gonna create a directory, then we'll cd into that directory, and then we'll finally we'll issue the wget command to download the package. Once it's done downloading, We'll go ahead and unzip it in this directory. That's going to create a couple subdirectories. So we'll cd into the subdirectory where the firmware files are, the two bin files. 
These are the ones that we're looking for and the ones we're going to use the ESP tool to burn onto our module. We'll be using Telnet to connect to the module once we've flashed it so we can connect it to our home Wi-Fi. Telnet's available from the Linux command line so there's no need to install anything for that. Now we're going to install the module into the adapter programmer and set the switch to program. Connect the adapter programmer to the USB port of your Linux machine. Now that you have the module physically connected to your Linux computer, go back to the terminal window, or if you closed it, open up a terminal window in the same folder you downloaded the bin files to, and enter the following command, the flash firmware files to your module. Now we have the router software on the module, but we need to configure it to connect to our Wi-Fi. To do that, we'll have to set the adapter programmer to the UART mode. So we'll need to unplug the adapter programmer from the USB port and switch it from program to UART mode. Now reconnect the adapter programmer to the USB port. Now, to be able to communicate from Linux machine to the module, we'll need to set up a local connection to the module back in the terminal. Enter the two commands below, press and return after each one. Now we can connect to the router running on the module via Telnet by entering Telnet base, the IP address by default 192.168.240.1 port 777. This gives you access to the slip router's command prompt. To set the router up to connect to your home Wi-Fi, enter these five commands at the command prompt, pressing enter after each one. You're going to set your SSID, typing in your SSID here, set your password, typing your Wi-Fi password here, set use underscore AP as zero, and then save. Once you've done with that, you're going to type reset and hit enter. Now you've configured the module to connect to your home Wi-Fi. We're going to unplug the programmer from the USB port and remove the ESP module from the programmer. Now it's ready to use in your TF330 and we'll get that installed next. Now that we have the router firmware installed and have configured it to connect to our Wi-Fi, we can physically install it on the TF board and continue with the setup on the Amiga side. To install the ESP module on the TF330 depends on how the card was set up by the builder that put it together. They may have installed installed a male or female header onto the board, or they may have left it blank. If it was left blank, you could solder the module directly to the board, or add a female header to the board to hold the module. If your board has a female header already installed, you can just insert the module into that. If, like mine, there's a male header installed, you'll have to decide how you want to connect the module to the board, as it has a male header as well. I thought about desoldering the pins and replacing them with the socket, like the one that's on the adapter programmer that we use to program the module. And that's what I'll probably do eventually. But for now, I've just taken eight jumper wires and connected them module that way. I added some tape around the pins after I connected them to make it easier to connect and reconnect the wire later. With the ESP8266 connected to the TF330, we can now install the 330 into the CD32. Because I have the cable attached, I routed mine out the back so I could watch the activity light while making this video, but it works just fine inside the case as well. Time to boot the CD32 and set up the Amiga to use the module to connect to the internet. With the CD32 booted, we'll need to install and configure some software on the Amiga side, but since the network isn't set up yet and the CD32 doesn't have a floppy drive, we'll need to come up with a way to get the software onto the CD32. The simplest way is to use either a Windows or a Linux computer to download the software and burn the files to CD. That's what I did. So the software you'll need to install on the Amiga is the TCP stack to allow you to connect the network through the module. And you'll also need to download uh, Stephen Terrible Fire Larry's install script from the Exos forums. I'll put the links in the description below on both of those. I decided to use Roadshow for my TCP stack. I understand that the module and the slip router software will work with other um, stacks. Uh, but for me, Roadshow was just the easiest to most straightforward to install, especially because you can use Stephen's script and it just automates the whole process. Now that we've downloaded those files, we'll burn them onto a CD, insert the CD into our CD32, and then copy the contents into the temp folder.
Okay, now we're going to go ahead and install Rocho by opening up the temp folder that we copied the install files to and running them from there. It's pretty straightforward. You can just take the defaults and go ahead and click through that. After that's done, we'll need to run Steven's script to set up the Amiga to use Roadshow, but we need to edit it before we go ahead and run it. What we want to do is open it up in text editor and edit the baud rate to match the baud rate that we set when we did the when we set up the slip router. By default, it's set to 38,400, and we want to change it to 115,200, like this. Then we save the script and open a shell up in the temp folder and type execute install underscore script. Terrible Fire's note on his script says this. The caveat is that it, it'll wipe your current settings. For me, I didn't have any because I didn't have a, a TCP stack set up already anyway. Um, if you have a stack already installed, it'll it's going to wipe those settings clean. And it, it uses Quad 8 for DNS resolution. That's the Google DNS resolution. Works fine, but you can change that if you need it. After the script runs, from the same command line that you just ran the script in, go ahead and type ping www.google.com to verify the connection. If all went well, you should see a response from Google. Congratulations. You set up your CD32 to connect to the internet via Wi-Fi through an ESP8266 module installed in your TF330 expansion. Now what? I mean, pinging things from the command line is kind of fun, but we've got an internet connection now, so we should load up a browser. I decided to use iBrowse. I'm using the demo version right now. I plan to get the full version eventually, uh, but right now it's uh, time limited, so you get 30 minutes. Um, and it does say that there's some features that aren't available, but I haven't found anything I haven't been able to use. So it works really well. I mean, try out the demo, see if it fits your needs. If you need longer than 30 minutes online on your CD32, go ahead and get the upgrade. What else can you do with an internet connected CD32? Well, one of the things I would suggest is to go over to Aminet. From there, you can download all sorts of software. Let's go ahead and download the latest Witch Amiga and see how that is. What's great about it is you can download it directly from the internet, right onto your CD32, and run it straight from there. It's something we take for granted on a PC, but it's pretty amazing to be able to do it on CD32. Also, if you're like me and you're comfortable on the command line, I would also suggest maybe installing wget for Amiga. There's a version on Aminet and it's well worth a look. All you have to do is type in wget and then the URL of the file that you want to get and it starts downloading it and it works really well. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting, maybe a little educational. If you liked the video, please like, comment. If you're not already, please subscribe. And if you hit the bell for notifications, you'll be notified as soon as videos come out. Thanks again for taking the time to watch the video. Have a great day.